Hi everyone, so today I'll be talking about two iconic species in Washington, uh, the American pika and the hoary marmot, and how important talus slope is for them, especially in a changing climate. Next, please. So a talus slope is uh, an open area of loose rock fragment, not a lot of soil and sparse vegetation, and it's usually located in alpine areas. And these talus, uh, next please, are extremely important for thousands of species worldwide because they provide protection from predators, but also have a buffer effect against climate extremes. So the spaces that are created between rocks, which we call crevices, create a thermal refugia that are critical to species that are very, very vulnerable to high temperatures, but also need to survive very cold and snowy winters like the American pika and the hoary marmot. Next. And so with climate change, extreme climate events are likely to occur more frequently, and this emphasizes the importance of the talus to these rock dweller mammals. Next. Next. And um, so uh, even though this is extremely important for them, there's not, not a lot of research that uh, studies how talus habitat morphology is affecting temperature in the crevices and also how these animals are using these different types of rocks. And this is due to a very complex, uh, it's very complex to measure 3D structure of rocks. And also there's logistical challenges in reaching talus slopes because they're usually in pretty remote areas. Another reason why there's a limited information on talus functional value is because most of the maps that we have access to don't illustrate talus very accurately because of scale limitations. So when we have satellite images, we just can't get uh, enough resolution to be able to characterize these talus as well as we would want to. Next, please. So to address these knowledge gaps, we have three different objectives. First, we want to develop a handheld photogrammetry method so we can map rocky habitats continuously and at a fine resolution. We also want to examine how surface and subsurface temperature patterns are varying within season, year, and characteristics of the talus slope uh, in the North Cascades. And finally, we want to look at a uh, different habitat used by pikas of these ro uh, rocky talus slopes. Next. So to do this, we chose the North Cascades as our study area. We have a total of 20 sites within talus patches. 16 of these sites are inside the national park. But then we also have two in the Lake Chelan Sawtooth Wilderness and two in the Mount Baker Wilderness. And we chose different uh, topographic characteristics for these sites. So we would have um, higher variability so we can com then compare the differences. So our sites um, range in elevation from about 400 to 2000 meters in aspect from 10 to 330 degrees. And also we have eight of the sites on the west side of the cascade or a graphic divide and 12 on the east side. Next, please. So for our first objective, which is to develop the handheld method. Next, please. Uh, we know that it's very difficult and time consuming to measure individual rocks within talus patches by hand. And it can also be dangerous sometimes because of rock rocks being unstable. So we wanted to develop this handheld method so we, we can collect data that's very detailed and uh, from that um, data, we are able to automate rock size and shape measurements. So this not only increases field safety because we're able to do all of those measurements from our computer in our lab, but also increases the amount and the detail of talus that can be measured because it's a lot faster than doing it in the field. And so the two bottom right images are just two examples of the maps that we were able to get using this method and the automatic measurements that we're also able to do. And this can be used for a lot of different measurements. We can uh, calculate percentage of vegetation or moss cover. We can calculate crevice size um, and roughness and also circularity, which are just some more parameters of uh, characterizing talus. And all of this information can help us um, assess habitat suitability for these species. Next, please. So for our second objective, we want to look at temperature patterns. Next, please. And 
So to do this, we have deployed two temperature loggers in each site. One is at a surface level and another one is inside a crevice under the rocks. So we want to look at um, differences between the surface and the crevice temperatures to see if we can confirm that crevices do act as a thermal buffer for these species. And then we will also be using this data to look at different metrics like temperature, maximum daily, uh, sorry, maximum daily temperatures, number of days above 28 degrees and below negative five and negative 10 degrees. We chose these values because they're important biological thresholds for pikas and marmots, and we want to see how they're evolving. And also we'll be using the temperature data to relate um, different site characteristics. So we'll be looking into east versus west and also elevation and rock pile metrics differences in the temperature. Next, please. Uh, here are just two examples of some preliminary results for the temperature on the right side. Um, with the right graph, it's a high elevation site. You can see that the red line, which is the crevice temperature, tends to be lower than the surface temperature during the summer months. And then when you look at the winter, it's the opposite. So the crevice temperature is warmer than the surface temperature. So this could lead to concluding that those crevices do act as thermal buffers, but further research still needs to, we still need to do further research on this. Next, please. And Finally, for our last objective, we want to specifically look at uh, pica hay piles. Next, please. So pikas don't hibernate and they spend most of the winter close to their hay piles. And hay piles are basically piles of vegetation that they collect during the summer. And it's what they mostly feed on, feed on during the winter because the vegetation outside is very scarce and of poor quality. So hay piles are extremely important to pikas. And we want to see if they're selecting specific rock characteristics to build their hay piles under. So we'll be collecting data next summer to look into that, uh, and we'll be using our handheld method for that as well. Next, please. So some key takeaways from this research is that uh, our work um, will provide information about the characteristics of rocky habitat that best provide refuge for these mammals. And so this information could provide manager, managers with the knowledge about what's the most important part of the rocky talus for these animals or the more sensitive locations. And this could help mitigate the loss of important broken rock habitat from human activities. It can also uh, improve the habitat monitoring and mapping and could eventually be used to create small mammal friendly highway crossings or even to connect natural habitat with artificial rock patches to help in animal dispersal since these animals have uh, some trouble with dispersal because they're small and their habitat is just, um, there's patches of habitat. If we could create artificial rock patches that we know uh, have the characteristics that they would use, this would probably help them in their dispersal. And finally, with this approach, um, it's uh, this method that I'm proposing. It's not only you; can, it can be used for different rocky habitats as well. As well, it's not just for uh, talus slopes. So we could use this at a coastal um, rocky habitat, but also other places where drones or satellites can't reach. For example, under the canopy surveys, we would be able to use this method to map all of those areas. Next, please. Thank you. Thank you. Very interesting work. Any questions? I think the bat biologist may be very interested in your work <laughs> going down the road. Oh, I see a question. Uh, there's a question. Yeah, is this structure from motion photogrammetry? Yes, yes, it is. How high above the substrate was the ca camera? Uh, it was about two meters high. 
I will be releasing a methods paper soon with all of this information too. So if you want to reach out to me by email, I can also answer some more questions. Great. 